Welcome to one of the toughest GMAT questions I've ever had the pleasure of thinking about. I think statement one is actually not that hard to evaluate, but statement two really took me a long time. So if, if this were on a real test, to be honest, I probably would just evaluate statement one and then guess among the remaining answer choices. But we're here to learn, so let's do a full analysis of each of these statements on its own. So we're visualizing this cylinder that's lying on its side, and we're told that the gasoline is two feet deep. Now statement one is kind enough to give us the diameter of the cylinder, apparently it's four feet. So now we can say that this cylinder is exactly half full of gasoline because the total diameter is four feet and it's half full, it's up to two feet full. So whatever the volume of the cylinder is, the gasoline is half of that. Now if we know the length of the cylinder and we know the diameter of the cylinder, can we find the volume of the cylinder? Yeah, sure, I don't actually need to know how to do that because it's data sufficiency. I just need to be confident that one could do that if one wanted to. Now, if you're curious, the way to find the volume of the cylinder is to multiply the area of the circle by the length of the cylinder. And the area of the circle would be radius squared times pi. You might have heard it as pi r squared. r in this case is 2 because the diameter is 4. And 2 squared times pi, so 4 pi multiplied by the length of 6. 24 pi, and the gasoline is half of that, so 12 pi. So suffice it to say, statement one is sufficient on its own, and if you know what it takes in order to find the volume of a cylinder, and if you make the observation that the gasoline is exactly half of the volume of the cylinder, then you can see that statement one is sufficient on its own. So that gets us to statement two, which I think is really, really interesting. Statement two tells us that the surface area of the top of the gasoline is 24, but don't forget, we know the length of the cylinder is 6. So then the, the missing link there, the, the width of the gasoline at the top, must be 4. Okay, so we know that the width of the gasoline at the top is 4, and we know that the depth of the gasoline is 2. And what we need to figure out is, does this statement on its own essentially imply the same thing that statement 1 told us, right? Statement 1 said, essentially, the gasoline takes up exactly half the volume of the cylinder. Can we make that same inference from statement two on its own? And here's how I would go about doing this. I would say, look, if these four feet that are the, the width of the top surface of the gasoline, if those four feet represent the diameter of the cylinder, then yes, it's saying the same thing as statement one. But must it represent the diameter, or is it possible that actually uh, the diameter is, say, five feet or six feet long? In other words, could it be that the gasoline isn't quite making it all the way up to the half point of the cylinder? Is it possible that it's lower than the half point? That's the question that I have to ask myself. So I would maybe draw a cross section of the cylinder at this point and imagine that the center of the cylinder is a bit higher than where the gasoline gets to. So we have two feet of gasoline there at the bottom, and then we have maybe another X feet on top, and then we get to the center of the cylinder. And so we have this width of four feet below the center. Let's imagine that. Well, if that's the case, then on the one hand, we would say the, the radius of the cylinder is X plus two. On the other hand, we'd draw this other line and say, well, that's also the radius of this cylinder. But then what we end up with is a triangle whose sides are x, 2, and x plus 2. But the side of a triangle is never going to be equal to the sum of the other two sides. In fact, there's a rule that says that any side of any triangle has to be shorter than the sum of the other two sides and longer than the difference of the other two sides. So we ended up here with an impossible situation where we have a triangle of 2x and 2 plus x. That can't happen. And that means that the premise that we were using was false. In other words, no, it's actually not possible that the true center of the cylinder is higher than where the gasoline ends up at the two feet depth 
that gasoline must be at exactly the center of the cylinder and therefore it turns out that statement 2 does imply the same thing that statement 1 implied and therefore the correct answer is D. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.